very, very interesting story have developed on a Yahoo. Uh, I saw this it published on March 14. They advertised this on a uh, like on a main page here. Billionaire LA family claims racism at least at least at elite West Side Country Club. Geez, and it goes to March the 14th when that stuff was published. And um, this was published just according to MKUltra instructions, it would be because this family here that you see was including the club, including the country club, was involved in MKUltra. They were both involved in MKUltra, the family of. Um, but the family of the man that is that filed the complaint uh, a Jewish man with a Hispanic family who filed the complaint discrimination racism complaint against this West Side Country Club uh, and the country club all were involved in this extermination procedure let's be Let's call it for what it is, because I am going to weigh in now between even discrimination, a uh, lawsuit right there, which uh, this family, Los Angeles family, have filed against the West Side Country Club. No, 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 no. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, the man, his name is Matthew Winnick is a 42 year old Jewish man and he also has a wife and therefore a children uh, who are because of his wife of Hispanic heritage so he is a Jewish man uh, wife and kids are of Hispanic heritage and um, I was taught during MK Ultra let's see uh, Uh, literally by this beautiful couple here that you see here yeah I was told and if you will ever dare to write something like this well uh, something like this here I will compliment this stuff because I see I have some very very interesting not followers but people that were involved in extermination procedure and are doing their best to distort facts about this case. Yeah, they video recorded themselves next to torture, they engineered torture, video recorded itself next to the torture, and they give the lessons on how it's going to be. Well, Mrs. Kamala Harris, that's not the way it's going to be. The way it's going to be, the way I will say how it's going to be. Your time is over. Now you're going to listen to me, not Biden, not Barack Obama, not George Bush, not Bill Clinton, not Donald Trump, not any fucking bigot you have in the United States of America. You're going to listen to me, whether you like it or not. Now, if you don't like it, that's fine with me too. For that matter, there are international institutions and of course, there is a law enforcement. I don't care which way this is going to take, but it will take. The criminal charges will be filed against every one of the mentioned parties, against every one of you. I am not willing to negotiate. I'm not willing to bend down, even less, even negotiate in absolutely any way with any American agency in respect to extermination procedure against me. That's a genocide. That's not discrimination. It's a genocide. So it's a matter of priorities for me to accent what I see you're doing and you continue to do based on my news. So there was listed here on this post. On March the 14th, on what you followed up, there is not a single cause of the Jew recorded in the entire history of the United States of America that would demonstrate Jews discriminating other racial or ethnic groups based on their racial 
or ethnic discrimination against them. Okay, so I think we understand each other. There's not a single case in the United States of America that will file against the Jewish community or a member of the Jewish community based on racial or ethnic discrimination. Um, what is missing, however, is, and it says here, it is the biggest proof, the biggest proof for, as stated at the beginning of this paragraph. Oh, shit. You know, uh, I was sure that I did place something in front of this paragraph right here. This is the paragraph that goes, yes? So, guess what? I did not. But guess what? I will follow up on it right now, and I will do it for you, so that you will better understand me exactly what I thought. Not what I thought, but what the facts are. So we're going to go here. Now watch me correct that stuff for you. So now you can take it home and you will have the whole thing. I'm going to do it for you. Yes? The biggest racists the biggest racial bigots the biggest racial and ethnic yeah i like that the biggest racial and ethnic bigots in united states of america are Jews. So what we're going to do here is we're going to multiply this and here is why there is not a single cause. I don't know if I, uh, why would I write cause? I don't think I wrote I wrote cause. Uh, it's a case of Jew recorded. Why? Why would I? Why would I? Why would I? Why would I write cause? Uh, I don't think I have written cause. Case yes, but cause not. Uh, not a single case of Jew recorded in the entire history of United States of America that would demonstrate Jews discriminating other racial or ethnic groups based on their based on their it necessities or races based on their ethnicities yeah based on their ethnicities or races Google will not correct it, but uh, there is nothing to correct. Well, Google would correct this, but I wouldn't let him to correct. Or races. Should against them. And what is also. Okay. Or race. Based on their ethnicities or races. Wow. And what also is the biggest proof for as stated at the beginning, at the beginning of this very paragraph, Mark in bold, right? Is it bold? Okay, like this. We're gonna do it like this. I like this. Okay, but I know that people who read this understood exactly what exactly I mean. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do it for you because it's really good. We're gonna do this as an example, like this. Mm 
maybe I can change into something like this and perfect, voila, there you go. So we do it like this and I'm sure you understand what I mean exactly by this, right? I'm sure it's not difficult for you to understand that uh, there is something very, very wrong with the society when you have a certain group of people within the society that faced historically looking at no lawsuit whatsoever, nothing, no lawsuit, no discrimination charge, nothing. And this is really, really the best case. It's from the case of my own about what the fuck went on, how they did it. Then I got another lesson. Then I got another lesson. Uh, this charge here that went on eventually expanded onto the territory of the state of the Florida. Since I got employment at South Florida Workforce Treatment, uh, South Florida Workforce, yeah, uh, no, sorry, uh, through the South Florida Workforce uh, um, Center for Innovation, whatever it is, whatever the name is in Miami, that's been so long ago. Uh, and I got employment at South Florida Treatment and Evaluation Center. Okay, so South Florida Treatment and Evaluation Center is forensic hospital in Miami downtown. Uh, in um, in Miami downtown, this is a this is a basically a prison where I landed a position for surveillance system operator. You would say, but well, that's not much of it. And I really thought about myself, that's not much of it. But the thing is that that's very, very much, that's extremely, extremely a lot. Because despite everything in life, I completed education even for mechanical engineering technician. So for the system, so discriminatory, so racist, basically, to dump down individual into zero like myself, that's a whole, a whole a lot. That is so fucking racist. That's actually so discriminatory, so racist, so hateful. Uh, that can only be in America, in the land of free. You know that song, only in America? Yeah? Expanded into the workers of this place at the same institution, at equal employment, opportunity commission where I file charges against black supervisors, black co-workers and so on it was such a discriminatory it was a place where it, i had never seen do or anything like this uh and the thing about it is it was not fault of these black people the thing about it is really the whole thing was the way they have demonstrated me depicted me to the people before i would even get the job you understand me before i would even get the job so i got the job in a certain element based on MK Ultra, with people having their opinion already based about me uh, from MK Ultra experience, from MK Ultra bestiality performed on me by American government. And you know, uh, what's interesting, what makes it interesting in this case here is that. <laughs> this is so funny. This this stuff is so funny. This is so hilarious. Uh, Jews own this club. Uh, this is the club where I apparently had discriminated against uh, Hispanic people, against people of colors. I don't know what I was doing. Uh, this is going to be really, really, really suit based on the title here I have posted. Based on this stuff here. We have really, really, really a clown in a company of the Holocaust members. The clown that's actually banning 
a quarter of the world from participating, from having the right to participate in a Holocaust cause. Entire Arabic community, Northern African, uh, Mid-Eastern community uh, is a clown that is making his havoc within American society and thus basically as pleased whichever way it feels, whichever way basically wind blows and with the people they have on a key locations, they do exactly what I stated here. They literally, some people said they decide about American presidents. Well, the thing is, the one who decides about all this stuff uh, really are the people that have allowed this stuff to go on. You know, that you would drug somebody up and torture him at some uh, Hillcrest County Club. I don't even play golf and I don't give a fuck about golf. Because he is the member of the so-called white community. Uh, because he is the member of Anglo-Saxon German uh, you know, founders of United States of America. Eh, the thing is, I am none of it below. None of the above I stated. I am not white. I was listed as... My family was actually, from both sides of my family, were listed as a partisan, as a national resistance during the World War II. The brother from my mom was killed by the Germans. Uh, family from my uh, father was already uh, listed as good to go, already was as, uh, at the train station, listed as good to go to, I don't know, Auschwitz or Dachau. Probably those are extermination camps. Probably the fate would not be very much different from one another. You made a big fucking mistake. <laughs> and uh, there were really beautiful, sexy, white women involved in this case. Anywhere from Claudia Schiffer to, um, let's say, um, and how about, let's say, a beautiful Jewish princess, let's say, such as is, let's say, um, Chelsea Handler, let's say, or let's say, you know, a gorgeous, 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 as you say, in only in America, you say a white woman, really beautiful, beautiful woman, uh, actually the most beautiful species of the white females that you would find anywhere on the internet and on anywhere you would find. They were literally involved in my case since I was a baby. And this is the stuff that's used primarily to pimp people into a neo-Nazism, into a fascism, into Nazism, into the Nazi issues. This is exactly the main weapon, the main tool, the way it worked. The second tool, even more effective, then what I stated to you are a Vladimir Putin's. Like the guy, he's laughing right there. That's a Putin right there laughing at you. This is a Jew. This is a Jew. In his case, is American. In Putin's case, is a Russian. And it's a Jew in America that officially handles the business for what I mentioned to you earlier, Anglo-Saxon German community, and it's a Jew in Russia that officially handles the business. At least it did. Maybe it got out of control in meanwhile. I have no fucking idea what's going on. Uh, Slavic people have, however, not recorded in its history yet the case when you would have uh, literally, at least not officially, uh, Ukrainian fighting Russian. Uh, no, actually, there were disputes. There were dis disputes between, uh, between. But uh, the thing is, it, it always was Jews in the middle, in the midst of it. That's what makes it interesting. Uh, but nothing like this, nothing like a massacre, ethnic cleansing, like we see or we have seen, let's say, in Bosnia, or we have seen, let's say, we see now in Ukraine, and so we we haven't had any of that kind of stuff, and I know it's really, really funny. Uh, 
I don't mind because I know that at the end of the day, it's not you deciding it about all, but the people who own you. You know, it's the United States of America, like I stated. Uh, so this club here, what I can tell you is like, like a white boy club. Uh, and is this the family here that it is? Okay. Uh, they look kind of a white to me. Um, white Hispanic. Uh, I don't know. Uh, all in all, from what I can tell is that uh, Hitler didn't have in plan anything other than extermination for entire Eastern Europe. So we, we must not be so damn white in that case. I'm going to put it this way. Um, why is it that certain ethnic group in the United States of America is so privileged? Um, because of this stupidity here. Because of this stuff here. Because of these issues here, you know. Because of what I stated here in the title. It goes into the Holocaust cause. Of basically, one group of people, that's Jews, basically, uh, privatizing what is actually universal cause because the holocaust is not as benjamin netanyahu claimed me it does not pertain only to the jews but it pertains to the slavic people it pertains to the roma people it pertains to the people the arabic people uh people with a darker color with a darker complexion uh, you know uh, when I say Roma people, I mean people, the Indian people. It actually pertains to Mongoloids. Uh, Mongoloids is an entire Asian group, which uh, Adolf Hitler listed for extermination procedure. You understand me what I'm saying? Mongoloids, he titled them as a Mongoloids and so on. Uh, the Holocaust pertains also to the German people that were expelled to Dachau, to the Auschwitz, because they, uh, they protested against the Hitler. Uh, it pertains to the British that uh, protested Hitler. It pertains to the French that were exterminated in certain cases uh, for opposing uh, Nazi ideals. It pertains to Italians. It pertains... Whoever uh, basically opposed, it doesn't matter really. Uh, and therefore should not be used for extermination purposes, especially not for extermination purposes of uh, the people, or I should even say members of the Holocaust uh, by another ethnic group, as it is in this case, by the Jews, okay? So, uh, yes, if I go and load this stuff, I was not clear about this stuff here, but I'm going to do it for you. The biggest racial and ethnic bigots in the United States of America are Jews, and here is why. And the thing about the Jews is something else. The thing about the Jews is like this. You could go and you could, you could have, you could easily fall a victim to a man ultra scam or whatever, and you're gonna work for an uh, employer and they're gonna do something to you because they do this in the United States of America all the time. Uh, and you'll go to the Twitter or you'll go to the Facebook, which are all monitored by a central intelligence agency, by the FBI, and you're gonna post a comment that is listed in a booklet from Equal Employment Opportunity as a hateful comment. And the only thing that's going to be is, now you're going to end up dead. You're going to end up, um, you're, you're going to end up not jobless, uh, not searching for another lower pay employment or something like that, but you're going, to pay, you're going to end up under the breach, literally homeless, you know? And it's not going to be even your fault. Uh, maybe it's just going to be somebody interested in you with a lot of money uh, to marry you or whatever, and they're going to do something like this. So he's going to come out as a prince or as a, as a 
you know, as your savior or whatever the case might be, uh, or and or maybe they need somebody that will uh, justify ethnic cleansing in a certain neighborhood. And what they're going to do is they're going to use you as a prime example that something is wrong with the neighborhood and so on. And you have all these state agents and top agents and, you know, storming down the neighborhood and they're going to start to interrogate people like for what my case was really, really used for. You know what I mean? You're going to have this kind of stuff going. Um, and it's interesting because always in, in, in at the top of this pyramid, always at the top of it, at the center of it, uh, really, really, really always are Jews. And if you will go and you will file some kind of case, you know, against them, this is the case that you can you 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 can file, and then it's going to be the procedure that followed up against me. And what you see here, if you manage, nobody ever managed so far to write something like I did. They anticipated I would, which is really a prime. I'm going to say a prime proof that stuff I'm talking about is factual. Um, then they're going to try to discredit you with a stuff that involved your discriminating other minorities, people, uh, and will be used to prove the community that was involved in the case is something like uh, we told you so, you know, look, look it, you know, we, we, it's going to be in other words, they're going to dare to even lessen you, to explain you on how things are. Now, the stuff that I have spoken about never takes against the top Aryan community in the United States of America. The real whites are always excluded. They get the debt, fake, even fake debt certificates disappear, appear under different names elsewhere. elsewhere. Ah, this is United States of America. Uh, it's where the money is a coin spins circles it's actually the shit is thrown from one hand to another and it circles and sometimes burns somebody here and there for real uh the people who are behind it all never get affected this is how it works this is how democracy works all right so you want to push the buttons i'm gonna fucking unload on you with so many issues so many cases so many examples that I'm going to drown you literally in your own shit. Go ahead and make my day. Um, despite all this, despite this man being involved in torture, despite the country club members being involved in torture, mm, I have to, I have to accent this. Uh, I like the idea even that this man is a Jewish man, and even that he was involved in a torture. I like the idea about him filing complaint against the Jewish uh, country club based on an incident that happened in the past. Based on the incident that happened in the past, I did not even go over to read about the incident because of the issue that I stated to you. So I'll go... I mean, it's going to be a whole lot of time I'm going to spend reading all kinds of incidents that took place. But he does have an incident. There was an incident he was discriminated against. I know because I was with him, whatever shit was cooked over there. Uh, I would say I salute this type of attitude. I, I'm going to say this is a very positive thing, actually, that he represented his family a Hispanic family. It doesn't matter. This is not directed. The stuff I did, it's not directed against, uh, in particular, against Jews. This guy, uh, I don't know really whether they assisted one so he could file the lawsuit because this is what it seems to me. It doesn't really matter. It, that doesn't really matter. It will contribute to the number of the cases filed against Jews, otherwise against whom never anybody have filed any case. So it will establish a certain chain of uh, facts 
that will add up to uh, a normal life in the United States of America. You know, in the U.S., you can go and you can file charges against the black people. You can go and go file against the white people. You can go and file charges against Ahono. The Jews protected themselves afterwards. In my case, they protected themselves and they went on and suggested that you cannot file the lawsuit against the black people. Uh, finally, they lost the case against me at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. It was so pathetic. And started to beg on knees to please let him be. And I was stupid enough, literally stupid enough to let him be. And even further listed as good as dead. With another employer on my resume, uh, literally once I disregarded the lawsuit against the Southern Florida Treatment and Evaluation Center in Miami downtown, they found a way to discriminate further and fire me, actually force me, force me to resign. And what was used further since I chased career in law enforcement to uh, fortify my inability to hold a work position. So it was a stupid thing to do. You should not, once you start, you should never give up from it. You, you have to go on and do your stuff because when you do the stuff like this, I can tell you, you exist. Your existence is confirmed. Now, whether they like this existence or not, that's their problem. That's also your problem. Uh, you have to know why you have done it, but you have the right. The law protects you. You have the right to do it, and you should do it. One thing you should never do, you should never back down. So what you are fighting right now, if I scroll down here, you may be you might be laughing at it, it might be funny to you, but it's not gonna be. You're fighting somebody who learned all this on own skin and own experience. He's now taking this to the next level to demonstrate further basically how you envisioned uh, extermination procedure to take place. In other words, you are fighting somebody who's not gonna back down and doesn't really care. And you know that's why you are laughing at it because you don't have real arguments left. So uh, there is a few more important issues I want to discuss about this stuff here. It was a very, very important issue that I wanted to discuss and dominate. Uh, is a lot of stuff and it just throws me out of what I was going to say, because I expand this into, into the bigger picture. I'm going to have to do it in two parts. So now we're going to finish this video. We're going to summarize this real fast for you. I thought it would be good for you to know how my case ended. Uh, my case, which I have listed here under this post here, compared to the case of uh i don't know cousin whatever from emhoff from husband from kamala harris uh, that is mr matthew vinnick this guy here that you see whose family also was involved in this case for god knows how long uh wow i mean these people are probably involved since i was i don't know what age it, since very my very young age all right, so this Jewish billionaire family was involved in the case already since I don't even know how long. I see here Bill Clinton right there. Yeah, I see it, but I don't think he's going to be happy to see me. Um, he's got a lot of problems over his head now when it comes to my case. And so I'm going to demonstrate you basically what this, um, what this case of uh, a relative from Doug Emhoff and uh, 
this white boys they they they, they used to refer to this white boy uh, golf club how it all ended up how it ended you know um see there's some paperwork here about the discrimination stuff like like a paper they basically took time in talking about equal employment opportunity commission to instruct me to demonstrate me how to properly file a discrimination claim against you know i don't know against whom they believe i'm gonna file the claim against i don't think they even knew against whom i'm gonna file the claim against I think they got, they got all confused and clusterfucked in this attempt to confuse and distort facts, um, even hide what you're about to hear next behind, oh, look at those smiles, uh, very convincing. You know, my case is something like this here. You see this here? More than 100 killed while trying to retrieve the food aid in Gaza. It happened at 4 a.m. as Egyptian aid trucks arrived in Gaza City. The sound of gunfire on this footage aired by Al Jazeera as Gazans who'd come to gather aid began to flee. And afterward, residents walk away with bags of food surrounded by the injured. So they basically machine gunned. Uh, or maybe this one is even better, basically. Yeah, dropping packages, basically. Packages used to literally bomb the people to feed aid, basically. That's fucking love that What's not to love about that? I see this like a, some some form of Jewish chutzpah, basically. I, I I see this like a like a joy, like a fun, completely completely indifferent bestiality from uh, the case of my own, which took place, uh, and what I have used. This is just an example I have used. My case is way more, far more extensive. The case against the EEOC against the government of the United States of America, uh, its extermination program as designed is far, far more extensive. But this is just a beautiful little case that I have used an opportunity to demonstrate to you. A Jewish bestiality, basically how this stuff works, how they operate in the US together with their masters. And I will not stop short of saying Irish, British, German, Scandinavians, Dutch, how it, it's all of this, it's everything like coordinated, like everything in, you know, how it all functions, the whole system based on what this system is based upon, what they're made out of, basically. Um, in the case of, of Matthew Vinick, and I think he's got like two brothers, and he was the least violent of this, of them. That's why I know he's got brothers, because he was the least violent. Um, he was also younger. He was least violent than, you know, this is, this is something, you know, I'm going to tell you that I don't actually understand how it works, this, this kind of stuff in the U.S. I don't understand. This is just a, a country that uh, I, I, I still don't have to figure it out really how it works um but it's a people that have a lot of money and they are allowed to do anything they're entitled basically to do anything with the people they can go on there and they can kill unlimited people they can they can do whatever they, they want to do it's like they really own the country it's like anything they want to get basically they get it they, they kill people, they do whatever the fuck they do. It's a strange country, United States of America definitely is not a land of free and brave. There is no bravery in drugging out somebody and getting his face and uh, threaten him and intimidate him and stuff like this. This is 
this is a really covered this uh, it's a thuggery, but you know, this is the United States of America. That's how they operate. Corruption, organized crime, it's exactly basically the way it operates. Well, in the case of the Jewel, because the whole program, in my opinion, when it comes to the United States of America, was run by the Equal Employment Opportunity, the whole extermination procedure enforced by Equal Employment Opportunity against me was done in such a way that they... At one point in time, they started to literally tutor me how to uh, file the claim and stuff like this, what to, you know, how to go and so on. And, and for me, this was, this was very, very tough to understand what exactly they are talking about because I did file the claim and I told during MK Ultra to Equal Employment Opportunity Commission people when I interacted with them after like 98, 1998, during MKUltra, they were involved in MKUltra since 1995. I told them that I'm not interested, you know, and they continue to insist that I should be interested. And I, I said, well, why the fuck would I be interested? You know, I need job, I need work, I need, you know, the right to exist. And they just, there is more money in this and so on. You should be interested and so on and this and that. They started to rape me down the throat, basically, with with issues that uh, really didn't, they didn't have no right to do this kind of stuff, you know. Uh, the Matthews case uh, commenced with uh, Matthew uh, parents uh, once he finished the high school. <clears throat> Actually, even before he finished the high school, when he was like 16, they started to search for the wife from the Matthew. And they found him just like the parents from this uh, wife he met. Uh, they found him what would be his wife. Uh, and he agreed upon that. And uh, they started a date. They, the two started to date already in a high school. Sometimes when he was 16 years old, they started to date. Mm. So... Um, <clears throat> Uh, her parents are not so wealthy. His parents obviously are billionaires. Uh, I am not sure. I think that uh, she is from apartment building. You know that she is from apartment building. Where we would go to sometimes with the mat to meet. Uh, her and her parents and stuff. And um, what else can I tell? Maybe she even has a sister, but that I'm not sure. So, the case which uh, Matthew have filed, discrimination uh, lawsuit, whatever. What is this shit here? Superior Court State, whatever. Let me see this here. President. Uh, da, 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 da. Um. I don't know what they're saying. I don't have a time for that stuff. Um, they instructed, I don't care what it says. This is not from EEOC. Who gives a fuck? Uh, EEOC case, uh, the Matthew initially did not want to file any kind of uh, a lawsuit and this and that. But it was the EEOC that was involved in the case. And they started to demand from him to go on with me and use the case, obviously to remind me about the presence of the EEOC in, in this extermination procedure, also at this degree. And so he went ahead and he had to take like it or not time and go through the EEOC procedure, through the entire EEOC procedure. And I had to witness how he filed the uh, the complaint, how the complaint was established, and then whatever, through the court or whatever, you know? And so the first thing was the same like it was in my case, yeah, but with completely different background, you know? Uh, they assisted him with a claim, and it all started when I, when I conversed with, uh, they conversed with me about the relations in the U.S., how it all wor works, operates, and and they told me, uh, because of these issues, because 
you cannot sue Jew in the United States of America. I was brainwashed. Uh, I asked the question, uh, how about the Jew? Can the Jew sue Jew, basically, for discrimination? And they told me, if the Jew uh, sues Jew for the discrimination, uh, then, in that case, uh, it's uh, it's Jew that does not profit, but it's always other people that profit. So it was determined before Matthew Vinick even uh, filed discrimination charge against this club. Against this is a white boys club, Jewish elite white boys club is what it was. It's a white boy. It's crucial for the white boys. Uh, what it was established is that uh, before he even filed charge against this white club, golf club, until 2003, I think there was only white people there in this club. Uh, 2003, 2002, something like this, only white. Then they started to hire also others. So this is already good proof, huh? When I when I tell you that you didn't have nothing in the in the club other than white, you can't fuck with this information. Uh, white Jews. They told me if you file, if he's gonna file the lawsuit, it's a it's a Jewish club. When the Jew is against the Jew, then nobody wins. They didn't say when he's going to file. I take those words away. But they explained to me if the Jew files against the Jew, then he is uh, no Jew profits. And it was the investigator who stated this in front of him and me. And he said, you know what, Matt? You go ahead and you go, you file that case. It was like, no, oh, yeah, yeah, you go and we're going to file the case. Yeah, we will file that case. And... Um, Whoever this investigator was uh, from Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, he simply directed him into the procedure on how he's going to file this uh, uh, charge, discrimination charge. Uh, and the outcome of this uh, money, uh, it was uh, first, it was Matthew came to me and said, Oh, well, we went through the first stage. It was successfully done, the investigation. It was a piece of cake. Very good, very good. And now we're going to see. Now is the lawsuit. Uh, and the lawsuit, everything, the outcome of the lawsuit came out in the, uh, the charge, discrimination charge. He, he had to file one according to EEOC instructions in 2001. And the results were known uh, like after like two or three years, like in 2003 or 2004. In 2003, he told me, we won. And it was we, because he had me through all these issues here. He took me to the meetings with Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, with the lawyers and stuff like that. Uh, he made me part participate and watch how he filed the suit and so on. And, you know, it's, it's tough because you are sleep deprived, you know. Uh, it's not such an easy thing to to participate this kind of stuff because uh, you're literally you're wasting Israel your release this footage you're you're literally wasting your precious energy to stay alive basically this is what how you develop cardiovascular problems how you destroy liver how you destroy kidneys to somebody how you f inflict a lot of internal injuries and you cause irreversible psychological damage as well you turn people into mental patients. You kill people like this. Okay? So this is the procedure that I had to undergo through the Equal Employment Opportunity. Uh, and finally, in 2003, he told me that we won the case. Uh, and because, you know, his family was involved in so much crime, so much violence. And I told him, hey, listen fuck you and your family and i don't want to have nothing to do with you uh 
they were killing me basically it was a murder procedure he was one of the people that took initiative to cause as much harm as possible uh he started to insist but you don't want to know you don't want to know how it works how how much we got how much money we got how much we we won we got the results you know he I actually said oh okay all right tell me what And when all over through the same concept, till I was like, okay, I will listen. Yes, okay. And it was other people who suggested, oh, uh, but you know, uh, you should listen. You and Matt won the case. You you won the case and so on. You did. You, you should listen to Matt, how much you won. You know, I didn't want to have nothing to do with this shit anymore. This is this is the MK Ultra. You have no place. You have no nothing. Nobody out there that you can you can count on. No police. No nothing. And uh, he goes on to tell me how much money, and it was like impressive amount of money. And I wanted to know how much of this money here now is mine because we won. Yeah, that's when the math started to to explain to me. Well, you know, uh, you are bad. You're racist. You know, you mistreat. That you know, you 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 don't like the Jews. You're not a Jew. You don't. You're anti-Semitic, you don't like this people, you don't like that people, you don't know what kind of people, what the fuck he did, and so on. He all of a sudden turned into, uh, again, into a math where he was giving me, you know, a background just like everything else. In this extermination procedure was based on killing the hope of the individual. The, its goal was basically to kill the hope in one. It's absolutely was was it was designed to turn me into a drug addict. It was designed to kill me, basically to kill me mentally, to brain kill me. Yeah, this is the Jewish truth spot. Basically, this is the Jew. This is how the Jews operate. And so, in the end, uh, it was decided that the money that he won, you know, for his lawsuit and all this stuff. And by the way, it was like a really fast decision. It didn't take him much after the EOC investigated. But this shit, they dragged on. They repeated these procedures, you know, about how we had to file. It wasn't one time. It wasn't two. It wasn't three, four fucking times. I don't know how many times we had to file these procedures and meet with the attorneys and so on. So uh, they continue to steal the time. They continue to steal and kill, in other words. They continue to steal the kind, and this is the concept of the Jew. Jew is based on, it's a time thief. They're based like on a on a time thief, basically to to deprive you, to deprive you that time of orientation, basically to 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 completely steal your life, basically to turn you into a junkie. This is the real concept of the Jew. And finally, he suggested, well, uh, the money. Uh, what I will do is I will dedicate one to some donation. I will it will be the donation to some Latino uh, I don't know organization charity something like this. Uh, I found this uh, type of donation to give uh, some list or something, and here I will donate the money to these people and so on and so forth and, and this and that. Yeah. So uh, if we go back in time, yes. Uh, the lesson number one from the EEOC was when the Jew sues Jew, it's no Jew that profit money. It is other people that profit money. So you see in this case of Matthew Vinick, or I should say Kamala Harris, Mr. Emhoff, uh, the lesson here is for the Jews, do not sue one another. Because when you sue one another Jews, it's other people that profit. I don't even know, quite frankly, listen to me. I don't even understand how the fuck you are, you people, Jews, are allowed to be in the United States of America. Based on the concept that I repeat, the words that I repeat right now from these Jews. Entire jury, American jury that was involved in it, and Israeli Knesset. I don't even understand how the fuck they allow it. How, why, do they, why do you allow Jews to be in the United States of America? It's a question. Why are Jews allowed to be in the United States of America? When Jew sues Jew, it's everybody else the prophet. So Jews, I have a friendly suggestion for you. Don't sue one another. Another thing that I learned about this case was 
Matthew of a darker complexion, you know, darker, much darker complexion than his blondine wife, Hispanic, you know. But if they found him a, 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 a Hispanic, uh, which was, however, was white, you know, because Latinos are not so white, right? So they look, they look for the woman uh, of uh, I don't know with the Latino name or whatever that is uh, that was as white as possible, and that was basically his wife. Then uh, to become his beautiful bride, his beautiful wife. Yes. Okay, so. Um, it was the lesson for the whites, for American wife, for the Anglo-Saxon, from the German, Germanoid, uh, Dutch, Scandinavian, uh, folk. Uh, the lesson was, well, uh, I will fight, I will fight for your right. You see, we will fight for the white people. Uh, so you should consider us as a beneficial. And then it was another lesson. It was a lesson for minority, you know. Uh, I am dark, but I am here for you. Uh, and it was another lesson in it. It was, well, because apparently that I discriminated against the last names of uh, Latino people. Uh, there you go. Uh, the Jews got fucked because I don't know what the issue was with uh, with whatever happened to his wife. I'm not even saying that this is what it was because I'm not going to even read this fucking shit here. I'm not even fucking reading this stuff. God have a mercy on your bones. Once I'm done with this case and when I meet you inside of the police room, when you're going to sit in front of me and I'm talking about you, Jew, from Miami downtown, Gonna be inside of the room and you're gonna fucking do a rega rega. You're gonna do the fucking folk song rap you're gonna fucking do in front of the police on the cameras about what the fuck you have done to me. You wanna say what the fuck you have done to me? This here is what you have done to me. This is just a little excerpt from my life in Jumerica. This case here I have used just to make. You know, just for the illustration, for demonstration purposes. However, all my life in the United States of Jew America was based on the stuff you see here. There was nothing other than discrimination about. And the one that enforced this extermination procedure, I don't know what this could be otherwise than extermination, was none other than Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. This is uh, perfect uh, for me here. It's perfect. Uh, really, really is perfect because I even see Bill Clinton here, you know. Um, I don't target in particular Jew as a Jew. No, 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 no. Uh, I want people to understand what the Jew America is all about because it's more than about Jews. It's about their masters, it's about their owners, it's about their Anglo-Saxon community to which they have adjusted themselves to so they could survive all these years when they immigrated from the Israel. This isn't about the Jews only, this is not about, the, this is all this is about the Germans, this is about the Dutch masters of the Jews in America, it is about basically this Americana, it's called Americana, it's a fucking Christmas tree for you. You want a fucking Chanukah? It's a, I break down for you a fucking American society, what the fuck you are based on. I take the fucking mask off your face, motherfuckers, and I put that in front of the world so the world can see, you fuckers, who you are. Now, let's go back to my case so that we finish this case here. With my case, the way it ended, the way it started, basically, this fucking case dragged and dragged and dragged. This was not the case. This case was finally filed at Bremen Cadillac, but it already started in 96, when Equal Employment Opportunity, basically Jews at Equal Employment Opportunity, uh, were doing everything possible to 
uh, make their presence in my case by literally giving me some shit amount of money to make themselves visible. Like they are somebody that, you know, in the United States of America, uh, you can count on, you know, Jews demanded from me to convert myself to the Judaism since the day I came to the United States of America in 1995. And I refused to do so. I didn't feel like I want to convert myself in a Jew. I'm an ethnic Slovenian. I had no reason really to convert myself in a Jew. Christian. And as such, not only as such, but this is United States, but this is how United States of America works. So this is a really good video for all the governments around the world that watch this and are taking fucking note to understand the mind of the Jew, basically what happens to the human being when it lands in the United States of America, what happens. They stalked me through the list of employers that have stolen wages, that have discriminated against me, uh, with a good amount of Jews being involved in it. Uh, they would visit employers, instructed employers to discriminate me, to engage in racism against me. Uh, they made my work circumstances, the work environment impossible, including through work hours, through the work environment, uh, with the customers they would use to create uh, crazy situations next to MKUltra. They were doing everything possible to destroy me. And they told me they would destroy me unless I will convert myself into the Judaism, unless I will become a Jew. And when I came in 1997 or 1998, I don't know, to apply at Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, finally, to get assistance, it was concerning the Bremen Cadillac. It was already before one time, well, like one year earlier, something like this, that I came and asked them because of another employer, because this shit went on like this. They told me, uh, you cannot file the lawsuit uh, against uh, against the Jews. You cannot file the lawsuit against Jews. Uh, because it was a list of Jews that I primarily wanted to file against, even some minorities that were involved in it. The Jews know how to create the work environment. The best case, the best example was a Bremen Cadillac. When a Jew was my co-worker, uh, and uh, the boss was, uh, I don't know, maybe they reminded really of the Ku Klux Klan or something like that, like a KKK. I mean, this, his name was Joe Harris, and Joe Harris was like a white American. Yeah. So basically, this is what, you know, he was out there. He was a white American. And uh, he went out there to uh, openly discriminate against the Jewish uh, guy that worked next to me. And uh, also uh, was looking at me if I will, uh, you know, I don't know, take the side against him. He, was, he would go like fucking openly. <laughs> we were fucking meet. Uh, and he, he would just go. And like openly discriminate, like in front of like the whole fucking room of people. You know what I mean? He would be like, the funny thing about it is about this Jewish coworker and Joe Harris is that the two worked together already. I don't know how long. And the funny thing was that the two knew each other very well. And some shit is is comical. Like you wouldn't fucking believe. It. Like like out of the fucking movie. I swear, it's like you will fucking see the fucking actors, people involved in MK Ultra that start to do shit like this in front of you. And expect from you that you will react basically to this MK Ultra scenarios, you know? And uh, he started to, to do stuff that, uh, uh, you know, I, I listened to it. I didn't know what the fuck is this. Uh, it didn't make me any sense, but everybody was quiet. Nobody said anything, you know, and I said, uh, you know, if uh, what are you going to do? You're going to go to, to another place again, look for the job or whatever. You know, everybody's comfortable. And the guy was completely comfortable. This Jewish guy was giving me a lesson that you have to be comfortable, but basically being discriminated. He gave me a lesson like, 
hey, uh, get used to being a nigger, basically, <laughs> you know, uh, and very soon it started to discriminate me with, hey, uh, you are from, I don't know, you're from Slovenia and uh, it's a bunch of Jews that came to Slovenia by Slovenia, the whole Slovenia uh, for a few dollars, uh, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know what else went on. Uh, I was, I have actually written document. I will get that document and put it on online. Uh, and some stuff I have not even mentioned. I did go to equal employment opportunity to meet the same people that were involved in MK Ultra, who were practically giving me instructions to literally convert myself into the Judaism. Um, in one way, they expected uh, from me to take the side of the Jewish guy that did not even complain about anything. On the other hand, uh, they instructed that if you are a Jew, uh, that is, if anybody discriminates you, that this person loses the case, if you are a Jew. So the best would be for me to just convert myself into the Jew. So, uh, it was a tall guy. Both of them are tall. The first guy, I don't know his name, but the, the investigator whom he dedicated to me uh, was, uh, his name was Marty. Before this, there was also some black people who told me, some black ladies who told me that uh, I don't have any kind of case, that this is, this is the way it is in America, and I don't know what. Uh, when I complain about... All kinds of issues where I would be coming over there to get advice, basically, how to what what to think, what to view. I didn't know the laws. I want to, to see the people, what people have to say, and so on. To basically learn what kind of country I am in. Uh, it was everything was normal to them, and really there was nothing normal about the situation. And uh, uh, Marty was actually Cuban American Jewish, something like this. Uh, but the guy who referred one to here to me was also a tall guy, just like Marty. Uh, was younger than Marty. Was American Jewish. I don't know. A uh, white guy. Uh, both appear to be white, you know. So uh, he was not going to go and investigate my case. Uh, it was Marty who's going to go and investigate my case, and didn't have any kind of problem. He did sit in the car and he went down to Bremen Cadillac, sit over there with the, the people, whatever. And within three days, uh, the case was resolved. Uh, obviously because of the co-workers, whatever the case might have been, uh, whatever they told him, what went on, uh, I don't know. Uh, the case was resolved, uh, you, were the, you were discriminated against, but it was, uh, the condition was that I filed under as, uh, as the guy who was of the Jewish origins, they instructed me, brainwashed me, even in Israel, that my mom, whose name is Yudnich, there you go, if you're by your mother, that you are Jewish, there you go, you can go and you can file uh, the lawsuit, uh, you're Jewish, you just, you just say that you're Jewish and so on. Basically, they wanted to start uh, Equal Employment and Opportunity Commission demanded for me to start the history of lying. Yeah, nobody asked about any kind of documentation if I'm really Jewish or I'm not Jewish. It's just enough that you go and you say that you're Jewish and that's it. And it was a certain person who discriminated against you, uh, saying there was a bunch of Jews who went to Slovenia, and another person confirms this, and that's it. Okay, the only thing was, you come and you collect your, uh, your money, uh, and the way this stuff started is, uh, they offered me, uh, I think it was like a 
the first thing that it was when I came said uh, we have the settlement for you it was so easy in the settlement I think it was like hundred and seventy five dollars and uh, I saw that stuff and I said no listen I said but you know what I, I told him I told him thank you listen thank you very much uh, you keep your uh, you keep your uh, you know thank you for your work for your help uh, I really appreciate you uh, but uh, you know thank you goodbye that was it and he said but the, here is the money and you have to sign the paper that we did the procedure that we investigated that you want the claim and so on I told him you know no no I, I just keep the money uh, keep everything it's okay but I really really thank you very much for your help yeah uh, that's all that's all yeah thank you uh, I went home the telephone ring if you will not come to pick up the money I will fuck you uh, you will have a problems uh, you don't know what kind of problem and so on and so forth uh, and it turned out ugly so the telephone ring several times they even called my ex-wife I told them listen uh, again the telephone ring uh, the amount of money changed to I don't know I realized what the problem is there was more money he offered I think like two hundred and fifty dollars or something and I told him listen sir thank you very much it's okay please keep the money give to the poor people whatever just keep your money and that's it you know uh, very soon believe it or not I was without the money no job no shit no nothing uh, under MK Ultra it was like eh, 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 eh. are we gonna fucking break you entirely you're gonna be fucking penniless yeah really I became a penniless uh, and I think it took about like six months or something like this before i decided four months i don't know how long before i decided to turn that number and go to collect the money and the, the money i think i'm not sure might have been even like 450 dollars i know they increased the money the amount of money like twice three times every time when i go over this shit, the more i recall about what went on yes so uh <laughs> So this is basically the way the equal employment opportunity works. Uh, I don't know really how much it was, but it do have documented everything, so it's not going to be difficult to see. I was told really literally uh, the amount of money they wanted to. We had to do this stuff because we did so many problems to you, and so we actually needed some form of proof that we did assist you. So this is basically the jewish way this is basically the way the jews does the equal employment opportunity but it did not stop there it gets even better now i'm almost talking like you know you would be watching like that kind of program that is like they sell this stuff on the on the internet like uh but that's not all if you buy this you get more so it did not stop there uh, it went into even insaner uh, situation. It went even into crazier. It was. It became even more extremist. Uh, when I met, literally anywhere from FBI people involved in it in Miami downtown. So, you know, I am gonna fucking bring you in the police room that I mentioned to you. You will come in front of the cameras and you will sit in me, for me, in the chair in front of me, and you're gonna talk in the camera what the fuck you did. Uh, with Employment Opportunity Commission investigators, uh, FBI people, uh, gesturing me, you know what they said? This is funny. You're going to love this one. Eh? They told me, well, uh, if you will uh, if you will side with us against them, uh, we will help you. We will testify for you uh, against them this was in a parenthesis against the germans because the jew is always like it's them and it's us you know what i mean us and them uh, me not no 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 <laughs> oh no that's why i love this case here i did not i mean i don't think they actually anticipated they're gonna get so much for this shit. 
I I don't think they 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 anticipated when they're gonna pull this stuff on me that it's gonna be stuff like this gonna blow in their faces, yeah. So uh, uh, all of a sudden it was us and it was them. If you will, uh, with us, yes, with the with the jewels, uh, then uh, we will testify about your MK Ultra. All of a sudden, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission and FBI people involved in this extermination procedure against me became my friends in Miami downtown. So all you have to do is basically is be us. And um, it was one hell of a uh, what's that movie name? Uh, Fly Over the Rainbow or whatever. I don't know about Jack Nicholson that plays that stuff. Uh, it was a tremendous, tremendous, I'm going to say, waste of time to try my life in Drew America. Um, yeah, this, this is basically like uh, me give you fucking chair. You sit in that fucking chair, you put the fucking camera in your face like you had done to me when I worked at this uh, South Florida Treatment Evaluation Center in this uh, Miami downtown uh, psychiatric hospital and you fucking confess into the fucking camera. Uh, basically, uh, the stuff you did, basically the stuff you're going to confirm about, the stuff I have stated. So... Chip, chip, get fucking ready, basically. That's all there is to it. You know? That's all there is. It was much more brutal, right? And this is just one case. This is what, what one case to what kind of extremism did it go with this equal employment, with this Judaism in the United States of America, where the fuck this uh, stuff have gone, to what kind of degree this... Uh, you know, I don't care. I don't have I don't have a problem with you know uh, any kind of religion, any kind of people. Uh, but um, all right, you know, when some people, some religions become so cocky about it, uh, we're gonna discuss it. I'm here. That's what I'm here for. You know, I'll help you out with this stuff so that uh, the next person is going to go to America so that the people in the United States of America of all racial backgrounds understand what the United States of Jew America is. You is Jew America or is America? I'm going to determine what exactly is it. And that was about it. I don't know. Have I seen here actually some sum of money here? Embarrassing a low property tax, 250000 Uh I'm thinking about how much the fuck was this supposed to be? How much money was this at the end? How much money you threw them? How much would he said that he would make out of this discrimination lawsuit? It wasn't much, man. It was like a half a million dollars, some shit like this, something like that. That this is, I don't know, that this is what I would share with the with the with the with the math. The math would share with me. Um I think they told me actually that this would be my part, like a half million dollars. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, so they're they're very humorous. Very humorous. These guys are humorous. You know? Very humorous. Humorous people. Since 2002, since 2001, I think it was like they employed somebody that was not as white, but everything else was like white in that club. This was this was actually the club. Um, What the hell is this here? Plaintiff Matthew Winnick and his attorney brother. Oh, hold on a moment. And his attorney brother, Gary Winnick, 
son uh, is the son of the billionaire investor Gary Vinick, Patriot, who died in November of last year, 76, at his mansion in Bel Air, California. So basically, the, they already say here, I think, that uh, that his attorney brother, that his attorney brother. I don't understand. I don't even understand. Look what is what is what the meaning of this sentence is here. The plaintiff obviously is Matthew Vinick, right? And his attorney brother um, is the son of the billionaire investor Gary Vinick. Uh, I think uh, that that uh, Matthew have two brothers. I think uh, this. Well, okay, maybe it's one brother. I don't know. But I, I thought it was two brothers. But here's the thing. Uh, he is attorney. Okay. Well, fuck it. I will tell you that his brother is older than Matthew, who filed the lawsuit. And I have the proof about them. Okay, Audrey, just like this, I fuck you. Here, if I go, this stuff here, if I zoom myself in this case, I can fucking tell you hell about this stuff here. I can tell you about a lot of issues. Uh, pertaining to this stuff here. What else can I tell you about this stuff? I don't have a time for this. Fuck this. I got a lot of stuff to do. Uh, I did outline the crime. To me, it was the most important. Uh, the suit was filed by attorney, attorney Alexander Vinick. So, okay, so they say here that he's got a brother. Okay, so I didn't I didn't tell nothing nothing new about this stuff, but Alexander Vinick is is older than than a Matthew Vinick, for one thing I'm gonna say. Maybe I could do a better job on going over these people, taking more time, but you know, the amount of information that I supplied you with, uh, basically the, the, the case was filed in two thousand and one. And it was finished in 2003, and they repeated and repeated and raped me over with the same issue until 2005, just in exactly the way I described. Uh, you know, I wouldn't want to have nothing to do with it. I told, uh, I told Matthew already. In meanwhile, we we became like totally enemies because of the violence. He became violent, like his brother. Basically, he was more and more violent. And it was other issues. It was other people that approached and suggested, well, you, you don't want to know. You don't want to know how much the, you and Matthew have won. Then the Matthew is not going to share his money with you. He won this for you. Listen to this shit. He won this money for you. He did absolutely everything possible to get me back to the table and express interest in knowing, basically, uh, how much money did we won? You know, when I when I when I think about this shit here, <laughs> about this uh, equal op employment opportunity, about this jury, the way it operates, the life, the way this stuff is done, this stuff is fucking sick, man. I had no idea how United States of America, what basically how it works. How the hell this stuff operates? What what the hell, you know? I had no idea. And I think that the, the people did not know what America really is, what this is all about, what is this? Because everybody is talking about, oh, well, he's a Jew, this guy is Jew, I like Jew, I don't like Jew. Oh, Jew, good. Everybody is like, oh, uh, it's going to be Jewish attorney, it's going to be Jewish this, it's going to be Jewish, of course. Uh, you know, everybody's thinking, oh, Holocaust, well, you're going to get justice. You're going to get fucking finger in your ass. Not a justice, but a justice attorney. And release Israeli it was known to me. Starts our coverage and a warning the following. It was it was known to me. It was it was way with bags of food surrounded by the injured. Israel released this footage of crowds that surrounded the aid and what it called tanks securing the convoy. That's when Gazans began fighting for food, said Israeli military spokesman Admiral Daniel Hagari. 
The tanks that were there to secure the convoy sees the Gazan being trampled and cautiously tries to disperse the mob with a few warning shots. When the hundreds became thousands uh -huh. covered in their blood. It happened at 4 a.m. as Egyptian aid trucks arrived in Gaza City. Uh-huh. 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 world finally is getting a taste about what America is and I'm gonna to tell to everybody around the world if you're gonna judge America uh, by its cover and for the cover the Nazi is using Jews you're gonna lose with Jews you lose and once you're gonna start to question the Holocaust itself. Once you're going to start to question whether these people are actually entitled and why they should have the right to participate in this cause, that's when you're going to start to win. That's when you're going to start to, when you're going to place them on in a category, in a place where they belong historically, where they belong according to their deeds, according to their presence on earth, that's when you can start to win because it's going to be in the same spot as all other nations and are going to be judged according to good and bad they do. The only time you're going to see winning you, that's basically just as Matthew Vinick have outlined. That's basically when Jew sues Jew, and that doesn't happen very often, does it? So this is this is I'm going to say this is like a state of the art, and I think they got uh, way more for their money than what they they anticipated they would. I took a special attention and extra time precious time that i should devote to other issues however to finish this one uh and um the fuck can i say i have even used uh on this laptop it's all regular laptop uh, that has a microphone problems and so on uh, all your recordings from the telephone to literally finish the videos so that you could you could get uh, the videos it is because they have sold me this laptop in a, such a state that it's such a rugged state that is just a, a, a trouble is what it is basically i had nothing other to say in respect to this video but i hope that the global community becomes aware uh, and understand this jewish issue for what it is, this phenomena, and then possibly the world will really be a better place. It might also be a better place for American people that, um, you know, they keep talking in the United States of America that the government lost its trust. I think this is, when it comes to the trust and stuff like this, that nobody has any trust in the government of the united states of america i think the government of the united states of america have lost its trust long time ago it's it's exactly life in the united states of america is mk ultra it's basically this shit here this this stuff here that you see they grab you for the throat and they deliver you from one place to another and you go from one place to another and they do crime after crime so they justify the crime And if you're not stable enough, they even convert you to whatever they want. This was completed on March 18, 2024.